Hello and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel. Today we're continuing our series on looking at the various nationalities within Blood and Plunder. I'm Joseph. I'm Guy. And I'm Dan. Today we're going to be looking at the French in Blood and Plunder. They hail from the salty caves of the Caribbean and the vast forests of North America. In Blood and Plunder, the French are very good at shooting and play very aggressively, as long as having a lot of other units and tactics and tricks that will confound and frighten all of your opponents. Joseph, just say it. Get it out of your system. Overpowered French! All right, are you good? Are you going to survive the rest of this? <laughs> Let me just soothe myself with a little of this drink here, and I'll be good for the rest of the video. <laughs> Excellent. Good job. Proud of you, buddy. <laughs> the French are really good in the game. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They started out being like, oh, this is going to be the nationality that's good at shooting. But they accidentally became good at everything. <laughs> We've When we talked about the Spanish, we said they were kind of a specialty um, faction or nation different units for different things. And I feel like the French are kind of that way too, in a lot of ways, but there are even more so in a lot of ways They're They have the best sniper. They have the best melee unit. They have the best infantry. Uh, they aren't necessarily good at everything all at once. Although a couple of units are pretty well-rounded, but they do have some of the uh, most dramatic specialized units, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, they, like you said, they have the the best shooting unit. They have uh, the best melee unit. Arguably, there's some, you know, like, what does make a good melee unit, but Flibuzés are really good at melee. And then even they have, I would say, the second best or third best boarding unit with Marines. Mm -hmm. uh, a, Marine charge is, a Marine charge is worth, like... Half of a half of a interplug charge, I would think. What do you think, Dan? They definitely hit hard. While they don't have quite the staying power as the plug do, they do hit very hard. If I need a boarding unit on the cheap cheap, I'll usually go ahead and take the four point Marines and just keep them trained because they serve. They're not the best, but they're definitely good enough. Yeah, they're going to they're going to get in there and get some stuff done. Especially if you stick a grizzled veteran with them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So let's zoom back out for a quick second and just talk about what we mean by that if people aren't as familiar with the game. So the Marines are the basic sailor unit of the French, and they're really cheap, and they're super good at melee. They aren't as powered up with weapons and explosives and stuff like some of the other boarding party units, but they cost almost half as much, and they hit like a truck. They will hit on fours on a charge. Whereas the Dutch one will hit on fives. Yes. Yeah, and that, that one difference really isn't, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's uh, enough of a difference that you'll, you'll notice differences. I also want to say that the French also get really unique militia. They have two types of, three types of militia, actually, at this point in the game. They have the uh, milite, which are their basic militia that save on sixes and have can have elusive instead of drilled. So it's militia. Or military, yeah. Not the tape. Mil or something. None of us militia. can speak for militia. <laughs> but they, they you can you can put them in cover uh and they save they're only three points a model for untrained and they're saving on fives. Yes. Militians. Uh, and then they also have their other, their uh, Maselske Caribbees, which are my favorite unit. They are their Caribbean militia that are have too many weapons. They have a <laughs> buccaneer gun, they have a pistol, and they have uh, plug bayonets. And they are four points untrained, five points a model. And they have a six shoot. So again, why are these guys even militia if they're, <laughs> if they're that good at shooting? And then their other one that uh, kind of, you know, it's it's new to me, but it's been in the book the whole time, is they have their uh, Marcel, uh, Marcel uh, Canadine, <laughs> which are the, their Canadian militia, which come trained for, for four points and also have a six shoot score and have elusive, so they end scouts and marksmen. 
again yeah. as a as a basic cheap militia. So it doesn't. It, it really the French don't make a lot of sense compared to the other other nationalities <laughs> in the game. They do have some meaningful weaknesses, though. Overall, I think the French, the two French weaknesses that you see quite a bit are resolve numbers aren't very good. Even their seven point buccaneer or buccaneer, uh, buccaneer, however you say, it, um, sniper units, one of the best units in the game. They still have a six, which is subpart resolve number. Their militia have all have six resolve, even those uh, more fancy uh the caribbean militia which are a step above for sure so in general less than average uh resolve and then the other weakness is a lot of them have a really poor fight save and some of them actually have a bad fight number too like those french canadian militia they have a seven fight Mm -hmm. which is quite bad in fact it's probably the worst i don't think any unit has an eight so but on the other hand, some other units have a five or a hard charger five, so a four or fight. So yeah, kind of all over the place. But fight save is bad and resolve is bad, at least. But if you just want to snipe, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna win. <laughs> yeah, coming fresh off my article that you know I just came off of, I felt like a lot of the French units did have. They're very much glass cannony. The ones that are meant for close combat. They rush in, they hit like a truck. But if anyone survives, your unit's gonna tip like a cow. They're just going to, if they don't run away, they're going to (laughs) die. Kind of all or nothing. Yeah. Which I think describes, describes it all. I think that describes the French nationality perfectly. It's all or nothing. You commit or you don't have anything at all. You commit to a shooting list, you commit to an aggressive list, and you basically, you you ride or die. (laughs) You don't want to be charged. You want to do the charging. Yep. You want to take initiative for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, now that we've covered kind of the French as a whole, uh, let's hone in on some of their various factions. Uh, Starting with, how about the land factions? Sure, I can run through those uh, real quick. Sort of quick. Uh, The first, one of the first factions published in the core rulebook is the French Caribbean Militia. And that uh, focuses on that fancy uh, militia unit that is better than all the other militia units. It's more expensive, well-armed. Good at shooting, not very good at melee. Yeah, missiles, this carabies. Yeah, they have a couple interesting um, commanders. I'm let you bring along filibust- filibusters. I'm just gonna say it the American way, filibustiers or however. Yeah, I think you even put them on horses on one of. Them. So a couple interesting options for commanders. Uh, this is quite a good list. It gives you some flexibility with movement. You get a free move every turn, uh, which can you can do some surprising things solid list and there's the canadian militia which is quite different it focuses on those uh militia canadian which are similar but cheaper they don't have as many weapons but they're really good at shooting really good at hiding they have marksmen so they can spend extra actions to get more bonuses on long range shots uh also bad in melee and then they have the Cour de Bois, which are a super solid unit there and there's a couple versions of the canadian militia well I guess I'm speaking out of turn. There's another updated list in Raise the Black that will be coming out with some fun commanders for that, too. So watch for new Canadian militia fun. Uh, The Chessuers are an interesting option. I don't know much about the history on them, so I can't speak to them very much. But they focus on that Buccaneer unit. Really good shoot skill. Their special rules let them be especially good in cover, or sneaking around and skirmishing and sniping. Pretty interesting uh, commander that gives everyone skirmishers. They can move forward, shoot, and move back. Um, and you can use the wives of the buccaneers, too. The buccaneri. That's a fun model to include in the force. Also, core uh, ungages, too. Which are kind of right. fun. Kind of the servants to the or indentured men to the buccaneers cheap unit with a good uh fight or shoot save or shoot and shoot save uh but bad uh, resolve like we talked about they have the timid special rule which is especially bad special rule where they get scared if they someone next to them gets shot then we have the french expeditionary force which is a fascinating force to build in uh you can take one usually you have to take core units and support units two core units for every support unit 
expeditionary force, you can take one support unit for every core unit. So you can take a unusual force that way. You can take a bunch of artillery. And their one special unique commander, Jean Bernard Desjeems. I know I'm butchering it. Uh, he can he treats all support as core, right? All support yeah. units as core. Yeah, so, so you can do all cannon. Super weird. <laughs> He also has a couple other funny things about him. Uh, he can be on a horse, but you can't attach him to a mounted unit. So it would just be him on a horse with people that aren't on horses around him. So it's uh, it's kind of funny to do that. And he also has the uh, uh, special ability Untrusted so or Mutual Hatred. So he can't <laughs> give command points to uh, Flibouzés, uh, Les Invents Perdus, or Bucanet. Yeah, he's a. That's a super weird list. You can do things in that force you can't do anywhere else. So if you like to do weird stuff, that's a good French expeditionary force. Um, then we got from the New Fire on the Frontier. We have the French Raiders, which incorporate a lot. This is North American stuff. A lot of uh, the Indian Alliance, French and Indian Alliance, was pretty strong. Wabanaki, especially um, a couple of new mid-grade commanders that are pretty fun a lot of sneaking and skirmishing and stuff available there uh so that's all we're getting to the french canadian militia the corps de bois the braves and then the new niases and young brave models they get quick which makes them really dangerous in they can do kind of long range charges and catch you unawares if you're not careful it's a fun list We've got the new france garrison which uses uh, a new kind of half professional unit. It's a professional unit, but uh, naturalized to the North American uh, continent and terrain. So they can they have an expertly drilled, but they also have scouts. So they can move through cover really well, but they can also let off a scary volley. And they have Louis de Bois de Frontenac, uh, a high power commander. It's pretty, pretty fun. Good tactician there. I hit them all, right? Those are the main. So you got Caribbean, you got uh, North America with different, different flavors. But every all of these land forces really um, focus on good, solid musketry. Yeah. And range support. And taking advantage of terrain. Oh, yeah. And movement, too. Like, a lot of them either yeah, give quick... Or you'll move at the end of a turn. That's kind of taking advantage of a terrain, but it is separate. Yeah, it is. Yeah. How about the sea factions? Well, as good as they are on land, I would argue they are just as good at sea. The premier faction, if you don't want to be like a professional unit, you can do the French Buccaneers. Good, solid, solid faction. They have way too many commanders to go <laughs> over in combination with the vanilla commanders, the sea commanders. So we're just going to cover the basics here. Mombar is the exterminator is solid with ruthless broadside lead by example and Vendetta Spanish. If you know you're going to be playing a game against the Spanish, he is a solid guy to take. And then we have I'll, I'm, I'm going to butcher this. Again, I don't speak French. I'm assuming it's Alexander Brodefer, for which means iron arm. He also has broadside, inspiring, lead by example, and lucky, which is fantastic. Lucky He's is one amazing. Of the best commanders for the price in that fact. Yeah. Oh, okay. Twenty yeah, point. For those who, lucky. Yeah, if those who don't know, lucky makes it so anytime this commander's force rolls a fortune point for a reroll, the fortune point is not spent if the if the result is worse than the initial. So if you screw up a, screw up your saves, you know, you're looking for five, you save three, you look to re-roll, and you get two, that fortune point is not spent, which is a really solid rule. It's actually just a quick note on the lucky. It's If it's not better, it doesn't have to be worse, just not better. So if you fail, and then you roll again, try to succeed, like a one dice check, like a sailing check or something. If you fail, and then fail again, it's not worse, but you still get to keep the fortune. So it's even better than that. Really good. Thank yeah. you for that. I don't play enough games with people who are lucky. <laughs> 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 then we have Julian Lambert. He's kind of cool. He can lead by example, very inspiring. An orthodox forest filibusters. He doesn't really do much in this faction because filibusters are core units. So 
I guess that's more applied to on land, but it's still, you know, solid and very inspiring is also good. Lead by example, while it's hard to, you know, get off. If you do manage to kill an entire unit with this guy, everybody bumps off point fatigue again. When it works, that's great. And then one of my favorite here, <laughs> Jean Pinel. He's got a special ship called is it La, La Volante or La Volante? Basically, if this force includes a brigantine. What, what was that guy? I think it's La Volante. La Volante? All right. Yeah, that sounds about right. If you include a brigantine with no more than six cannons, its windward value becomes zero inches and its top speed becomes five. And it adds one inch to each sail setting above zero when sailing large. It's great. It's always nice to bring a unique ship. And then his rules, uh, they're okay. Brawlers is kind of meh. You know, it's better than, Hoping you know, nothing. But if you're already charging, if you attach them with a group of filibusters and they charge, on top of re-rolling your misses with pistols, you also get to re-roll any natural tens that you get to score additional hits. So that's cool when it stacks by itself. Eh, but stacking with British pistols, it's awesome. You know, typical broadside, and again, lead by example. Pretty cool. You know, I wouldn't. I would say solid. You know, at twenty five points, he's about the same cost and has about the same range as a vanilla buccaneer commander, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, the yeah, he does the seasoned one. Yeah, same points. He's got a little bit less of a command range, but I would argue much better special rules. I think those are great. Cool to have a unique ship. Yeah, that's the that's the big <laughs> that is the big draw. Then after Jean Pinel, we have Diego the Mulatto. And again, we can't get away from Dutch people while ever I'm on here. So hmm. quick quick thing, broadside Commodore, lead by example, very inspiring, usual good stuff. If you know you're playing against a Spanish opponent, he does come with Vendetta Spanish, which really, really helps, especially if you're like me. I like to fight against the Spanish, so Vendetta really helps. For La Sour de Grimaud, he's pretty cool. He allows you to basically be able to spam <laughs> field guns if you play him on land. At sea... I mean, he's still, you know, pretty all right. 16 inches, three command points, pretty good. Very inspiring. And Alon is nothing to snort at, but I feel like he's kind of wasted on a ship almost. So we have two variations of the French-Canadian privateers. We have the first variation that's got more of a European kind of flair. However, due to somebody's new book that came out recently for Fire on the Frontier, they expanded them, and they've replaced all those units with Native American units. And they are awesome, especially if you want to bring natives on a ship. This is the way to do it. It's fantastic. And then we get into the professional side of things with the French Royal Navy. It is a fantastic piece of hardware to bring as far as factions go. The Royal Navies are always fun. They get bonuses and basically may re-roll results of a critical or lucky hit against opponent ship's rigging, which really reflects the French doctrine navally at the time, which is super cool. However, the naval gunner special rule is, eh, you basically give your infantry the ability to only carry standard melee weapons and exchange their expertly drilled for artillery crew. Kind of, eh, I'd rather still use Marins and let the infantry do their job at, you know, being infantry. But it's still pretty solid, like most of the Royal Navies are. And if you're looking at playing a nice big game, we have, and I'm going to butcher this, Jean Comte d'Estres. I think we went over that the Comte is Count, but he's got, again, 16 inches of command range, three points. Fantastic. Broadside Commodore, very inspiring. Solid for a big game. Solid. Well, he's expensive. I'd say in 300 points more, bringing multiple ships, solid choice. So your doctrine for playing the French at sea, you have two choices. You can do either a slower ship with muskets galore and do like a medium range swivels and musket fire, or you can commit to melee. They're not too good on the cannons because none of their units have the expert artillery crew special rules, so your English and Dutch lists are going to load cannons faster and blow you out of the water. But if you get within mid-range and just kind of circle, you can really light people up with your superior musketry and swivel guns. And then, if you're really cheeky and you want to board, the Marins, like we talked about, are solid. Filibuster are solid, their less infant Perdues are solid in a supporting role, their glass cannons, I never lead a charge with them, but they are going to overwhelm via melee very, very easily if you get close. Just make sure you soften those units up before you get there, because if you get hit back, you will probably crumble. They hit hard, but only hit once. <laughs> yes, essentially. <laughs> so, Guy, I know you have some colorful French legendary commanders for us, why don't you tell us about them? 
I will indeed. Uh, we'll start with probably the most worst faction of them all, which is the <laughs> Flibouzés Now. This faction is read by Francois Lolanet, uh, a ruthless, bloodthirsty pirate that has a beautiful model where he's cleaning blood from his sword. Unfortunately, his faction is terrible, and you should always play him in French Buccaneers instead. <laughs> it is... <laughs> It it is terrible because it does not it he he really wants to be a uh, sea commander because he has ruthless and ruthless will help a musket crew that he's attached to like Flibuzés broadside will let you shoot and he also has very inspiring and tear he's good on a ship uh, I really like him on a ship on land in this faction. It's hurt by its selection of units, which are Ungajes, Flibuzés, and Les Enfants Perdus as your core units. So he doesn't get, for being on a ship, he doesn't have any Marines as a core unit. So I think he does okay on land too, but yeah, he's really not that great on a cannon ship. <laughs> no, no, he isn't. And if you want to put him on land... You know, his his ability gives everybody ruthless, but with core units, you're going to have a uh, a solid block of Flibuzés, and then you're going to want to pick up some Ungajés to support him, and they have Timid, so they're just going to kind of ruin the point of ruthless a little bit <laughs> by just <laughs> racking up a bunch of fatigue on them. So moving on, the better legendary faction is the Flibuzés de Graf. Which I love is, them. I love him so much. <laughs> he is he is kind of the uh the pirate's pirate, the French the Frenchiest French, uh Lorho de Graf or or Lorenz de Graf is forty two points and he has five special abilities. Swordsman, very inspiring, expert broadside, singling pastor, and felicitous. He does everything uh on a ship very well. And his faction gives all of your your every unit <laughs> gains <laughs> gains the expert artillery crew <laughs> special rule. So buccaneers on their cannons. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> and he also both of these are buccaneer. Both of the factions I've talked about so far are buccaneer factions. So they also let you discard your hand. But his selection of units is a little bit better. The, because it gives you uh, Bucanese, Flibuzés, and Marines as core units, and then lots of other units as support ones. But he's a lot of fun, even though he is kind of expensive uh, at 42 points. It's really a lot of fun to play with him. The last of the legendary factions is the new one, and is it is I, I haven't had a chance to try this out yet, but I really want to. It's Iberville's Expeditionary Forces. This is led by Pierre Leno de Ebreville, and he has kind of the reputation of he, we haven't mentioned him yet, but a lot of the factions that we've been naming, he can lead. And he's everywhere. <laughs> he, just yeah, a huge he is, he, he gets to be everywhere. He, he really does. And in Fire on the Frontier, he actually gets his own legendary faction that gives him little abilities from all the other different factions he can lead. So he can take one support unit for every core unit, just like Expeditionary Forces. Uh, he can re-roll the critical result of a lucky hit on rigging, just like the French Royal Navy. <laughs> and he can discard his... You can uh, With him, you can discard your hand and replace it with a new one without spending a fortune, just like the Buccaneers. So... <laughs> He's a lot of fun. He can lead them all. He can do it all. Yeah, and he gets he gets a wide swath of uh, newer u of units. Uh, this is mainly based on the Canadian ones, but he gets Flibuzés as well. So he's a it's a it's a new one. I really want to try it out. I need to get a special Iberville painted up just for him. They're going to make a unique model for him. Although it's kind of funny because. Oh. The generic French commander, I'm pretty sure they modeled it after the portrait we have of de Iberville, so it's going to be kind of hard to make a legendary model since we already kind of have. But that's have in the, the works. perfect legendary model. Yep. <laughs> well, that would be exciting. 
Yeah, it would be. I think he deserves a, a, his own model. He's pretty cool. Oh, there's a picture. There's a, a statue of him in a, with a tricorn. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he is a remarkable uh, military man. But then he just, yeah. like, in the middle of an invasion, he just got sick and died, and then the invasion totally flopped. It was horrible. Ah. <laughs> but he was in Canada. He was in the Caribbean. He was in uh, Louisiana. He was in Florida. He was everywhere. Oh, he got those got those frequent boat miles. That's, that's cool. Right. <laughs> frequent boat. But that's the three legendary factions. I think they're all worth trying out a little bit, at least once or twice. I I mean, I like the Francois Lolanay model. It it is a lot of fun that's to paint, awesome. and it, it looks so good. He looks so cool, and he's. Well, I he's am disappointed good. he's not chomping the raw heart he's oh, out of someone There's right stories about him. <laughs> <laughs> or he doesn't have uh somebody that he's holding in front of him that's right. what i wanted to see <laughs> like him with like splattered brains all over his chest <laughs> <laughs> i think the uh model they have painted up for the book has blood spatters on them so they try yeah <laughs> I've actually played the filibusters de Graff, and it was a lot of fun. Again, I love Loro de Graff. I think he's super colorful. He almost reminds me of Jack Sparrow in his just hilariousness. And I played his faction, and he hits hard. He hits really hard. That's a really good faction. Yeah, he it is. He's really good at what he does. And that Felicitas, it's just it's really cool to have uh, that many fortune in the game. It makes you want to use all your fortune in the first uh, first or second turn, so you have that constant supply of fortune after that. Yeah, if you start a turn without a fortune, you get a free fortune point. So, yeah, if you yeah. spend them all the first turn, you could use eight fortune points. Now, uh, if I was going to categorize these, uh, the Flibuzes, uh, Flibu or the Flibuze now, I would say is mainly intended as a land faction with a lot of uh, musketeering, really close to the uh, Chasseurs, actually, in how, how they would play. The uh, Flibuze uh, de Graaf is a French buccaneer faction, so a sea ship, uh, but kind of it, it dips its toe into French and English waters by being really good at cannons. If you yeah. want to be a Flibuze de Graaf and just run cannons, you're going to have a good time. Like, you will. And Iberville's Expeditionary Forces uh, does not have the Expeditionary Force requirement of not having size 2 or above ships. So you can put him on a ship if you want. He does a little oh, bit yeah. of everything. Oh, yeah. Like, so you can kind of put him wherever you want and have fun with it on a ship or in on land. But he's going to kind of run the typical French strategies of either land, you want to do the show of force and the controlling your movement and and the opponent's movement and the terrain. And on a ship, you're going to want to uh, want to board or focus on your expert musketry rather than cannons. Although you do have some cannons if you want to go up against a rigging, you know. <clears throat> but that's the legendary factions. So let's uh, talk about why a person would want to play the French. If you want to win tournaments, you should play the French. Couldn't contain yourself. <laughs> That's uh <laughs> overpowered <laughs> French. I think oh, I think you're hitting on like what, what makes the French good. The French are good out of the box. They were good at shooting. The thing about shooting though is you get to shoot in this huge like like twenty eight inch radius around your models. And that's most of the board. So you're good at th you're good at interacting through shooting with your opponent's models. And a lot of times on a land game, you can keep the game that way. If you know how to work with the terrain that's on the board, you can sit yourself down and have a kill zone where if they try to approach you, you'll wreck them. Uh, I did a tournament at Gen Con one year, and I was English, and I got to the last table and I was fighting the French and I would just outclassed and gunnery and I but if I went forward I was going to get hit by filibusters with brace of pistols as well so I kind of got stymied and I couldn't outshoot the French so you, the French player wants it well to keep. if you play him well yeah you keep him at range you're good but then in addition to that on land 
you can do some really tricky things with the French where using that those command those uh, faction abilities to give you the free move you can the last card of one turn jump somebody up a foot and then mm -hmm. hope for the high card the next turn to like surprise somebody like that uh you either got enough fatigue on a unit to uh and you drop prone going like oh they're they're 20 inches away there's no way they could charge me mm -hmm. you're prone and you're charged and the whole unit's dead or it's yeah, if you crunch the numbers, it's conceivable if you do the last activation, if you move 12 inches, take a fatigue, and the next activation, if you have a quick on a spade with a commander, you can move another 12 inches without taking a fatigue. You can do a 24-inch move before they respond at all. That's the kind of crazy stuff you can do. So, and uh, on ships, French Buccaneers are a fun faction. They're very killy. Yeah. Very, very, like... Like the Marines can shoot okay on cannons. They're they're not bad at it. You don't get if you put a master gunner there, then you get you get the uh reloads on hearts. So they're gonna shoot just as well as most other people. But you know, when you need them to drop the drop the cannonballs and charge, they're gonna be really good at that. So I've had success with Marines. They're they're my favorite boarding party if I'm gonna board. All the success you've had on them gives me uh, emotional scars, so I hate them, yes. <laughs> I've had to pry Marins out of the gun deck of a galleon, and that's no fun. <laughs> oh! That's no fun at all. And I had my Zeliden, my Interplug, I had all my good units that I took hardly any damage, and it was a long, bloody fight to pull them out of there. Ooh. I feel for you. Oh. They're very killy. All, even the filibusters. The, the filibusters are a good six-point boarding party in my opinion they can fire if you have if you activate them on a club you can roll a grapple and if you get that grapple you can pull the ship close unload with muskets at point blank range then charge the brace of pistols it hurts <laughs> and they have the sailors too so they can when they're not shooting they can do whatever you want a ship to do advanced maneuvers uh change sail settings all of that stuff you just want to play very aggressive when you're playing a boarding list at sea you're already being aggressive by being a boarding list, but you don't want to spend too much time getting shot up. Yeah, it's kind of funny looking at these uh, sets of lists. Land, you really want to use muskets. Sea, you really yep. want to get into melee. So they're experts at opposite things. On their... You can do muskets at sea, but it, your real strength is in your melee, your uh, alpha strike, that first charge ability. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, you can you do... do both things, but different places. You can do a uh, boucanet on a ship, but like half of their abilities turn off yeah, as long right. as you're on a ship. In yeah. smaller and point games, I'll put four four boucanet up in a fighting top. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> no. No, they're saving on sixes up there. Um, I'm worried about cannons. The The rules do not are not kind to units in fighting tops right now. <laughs> But you have to take the time to shoot at them when you'd rather shoot at the yeah decks with every... two units on them and actually do damage to the hole and stuff. But if you take the time, yeah, you can knock them out of the fighting tops. It yeah. really evokes that image of that scene in Black Sails when Flint is chasing the Andromache and he has the guy up in the crow's nest shooting at the guy who's turning the ship. That's what really intrigues me is that if you put a sharpshooter with them and you just pick a unit that you want to put fatigue on, you're denying them cover by being up there and just shooting down every chance you get. And it's just, it's gnarly. Yeah, you're denying them the hard cover by that's, uh, that evens out the, the plus one from the gun walls to the, the minus one from mm -hmm. the, uh, from the height. Yeah. And like you said, if they want to shoot your, Buccaneers, they got to shoot up there. They're not shooting at your guys at the deck, so it's a tactical choice. If they choose to focus on the gun deck, you can sit there and just whittle down their cannon crew from the top. Mm -hmm. It's not bad either. Uh, it's not bad, too, if you want to... What I've done with the French is I'll put the Missiles de Carvis on a deck with, a, with four of them up in the fighting tops. They have a six shoot, and with the way that the rules with subsections work right now, that unit still gets to charge 
as to get gets to board for one action, even though four models are up in the tufts. So I imagine them all the game guy. <laughs> they swing over from the fighting tops. They uh, they jump over to the opponent's sail and ride down on their on their plug. <laughs> The plug bayonet. Well, a critical uh, hit on your opponent's sail when you slide down it with a knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that works too, and that uh that lets you kind of share the burden of the uh, cannon crew too, by putting uh four point models in there. I don't know. I've had a lot of fun with the French. Uh, I think people should play it. You need at least one front one French player in your your player pool. I think Just keep everyone else humble. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody can complain about them. The French starter box is a really good box too. Those French Caribbean militia can be used for a couple of different things. Uh, the Buccaneer, Buccaneer are really good. Um, the Marines are good. What's the fourth model in there? I think they're filibusters. Yeah, uh, filibusters are an amazing unit. They get used in a lot of factions, and they're a good multi permit purpose unit. So that starter box is really valuable. I think good place to start. For Anybody, uh, new players, I think this is one of the best places to start, really, because you get interesting and diverse selection of units, and the power level is high enough that you will do well. Yeah, and sometimes you don't even need more than four Bukine. Yeah, just a unit of four of them can be sufficient. If you just keep them hidden, they aren't going to mm-hmm. give much fatigue, and they'll still have an impact on the game. And if you're playing uh, the French Caribbean militia, put your commander with them. <laughs> yeah, you get a a free book in that way. Yeah, seven point <laughs> model for zero. <laughs> All right, we we'll probably should wrap it up there. We've talked about a French for a while. Uh, very warlike nation. Um, these guys know what they're doing. A lot of, lots of fun factions, good diversity in units and factions. And you should have and play time. styles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for you can see a written review that I think Guy did for us on the blog Blood and Plunder or Blood and Pigment dot com, along with other nation reviews and faction reviews and all sorts of other articles about uh, Blood and Plunder. You can go check it out at Blood and Pigment dot com. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. Ho ho ho, and as always, keep your dice at the ready and the wind at your back. Ho ho ho.